There we go. All right, so today, guys, we're going to check out the progress tracker. We're going to start off looking at some of the future features that are coming up in the game. Uh, I'm talking stuff that's a couple months out. Stuff that might be, I don't know, a year out? No, I actually don't think it goes that far. I think we get up to, yeah, Q2 of next year. So stuff that's at least three quarters away. Four quarters away. So it's kind of, for those of you who don't know or who have never seen this or maybe have only seen this once or heard about it, I don't know. Uh, this is the progress tracker. You can actually see it up here in the corner. I have this stupid goals thing. Hold on. There it is. See it up there? Top left corner. That way. Over there. Yeah, so this is the progress tracker for Star Citizen and it contains all of the... Is the music a little bit loud? It feels a little loud to me. Let me turn it down a little bit for you guys. Uh, so it contains all of the teams that work at Star Citizen. A lot of people for some reason they don't think that things are being worked on. And I mean, this is this is this is the easiest way to see <laughs> if every company did this for every game, that'd be incredible. But this is every team, not every team. I don't I don't think it's every single team, but it's almost every team at CIG. It gives you an idea of uh, what their what their role is based on their title, which is, I think, one of the biggest advantages to this system is that we can now we can look at what is going on. Okay, when they announce Star Citizen Live episodes, they tell us they have a team that they're gonna bring on to an episode. Uh, you guys gotta start submitting questions for them. Get ready to ask them questions at Twitch. Before this, I don't think most people knew what exactly to ask a team because we didn't know what a team was working on. We just kinda knew the general idea of what that team did. Now you can go in here and you can find the specific team that's going on Star Citizen Live and you can be like, okay, here are the five things that they're, you know, they have scheduled or that they're at least in some way related to. So I can ask them questions about it. It's way better that way. But besides that, you can also track down something that you're super interested in. So let's say that I really want to see mm, what's going on with uh, jump points. And let's say I can't really find that. I don't know what team would be working on that. You can go over to the other section and you can go scroll all the way down to the J's to find jump points or you come up here and you could search it whatever <laughs> whatever feature you're interested in you can literally search for it and then figure out who's working on it how long are they working on it for and what else are they working on it's pretty crazy so i'll sometimes dip into this if i'm reading the monthly report and i come across a team section and they're talking about okay, so this team's working on this, blah, 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 blah. And then I see that same thing somewhere else. I'll sometimes come in here and see if I can find that feature and actually see if the two teams are linked on there just to like cross check it, make sure it's all, it all matches up. And it does. It's, it's actually, it, you know, either they have very good coordination between the monthly report team and the progress tracker team or work's actually being done. So Let's dip into one of these teams. Does anybody have any uh, teams that they'd like to see specifically? Any features that they're looking for that they're excited about? I guess we could just kind of start at the top. And I did actually just write uh, the monthly report for yesterday. I live tweeted it, which was a lot of fun. A lot of people participated in there. You can go uh, check that out if you want. I also uh, wrote it up and delivered it to my Patreon members. So if you are a Patreon member, uh, of the upper tiers, I believe it's everything but the first tier, you get that written up for you every month. And in that monthly report, in the May monthly report, we saw a ton of talk about AI. A freaking ton. Uh, there's a lot of really big AI stuff going on right now. And it looks like you guys are interested in salvage, so we'll get back to that. But I do want to touch on AI before we move on. So let's find salvage. Where would salvage be? Salvage would be in the, hmm, the actor team? Does that sound right? The actor feature team? No. Actor tech team? No. Where would salvage be? What's up, Haggard? Nair Bear. Thanks for following the channel. 
Mm -mm -mm. Is there a gameplay tab? There's a gameplay story, but I believe that's just for Squadron 42. Yeah. Weapon feature team. Weapon feature team. That's all the way down here. Good call, my man. Baranova, you got it. There it is. Salvage. Work just got started. So let's move on to AI, like I was saying. Let's see. Security behavior is something that they actually, they showed in the monthly report this month. You'll see that in my video. Uh, and it looks like it's completely done. At least as far as this team is concerned. Let's see the deliverable view. Yeah, so there's one more team that needed to work on it. That's why when you're looking at the team's view and you come across a feature that you're interested in and it looks like it was finished, don't let that fool you. Always go to the deliverable view to see if there's another team that still has work to do on it. That'll that'll catch you. And it looks like it's the mocap team, which they were talking about in the monthly report. So this feature is almost done. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be in 314. I don't think they'll need it yet. I think they'll still have to wait until security tier zero is in, which I believe got delayed. You're so happy that the Lost System 2.0 in missile mode is coming up. Is uh, the Lost System, is that coming in 314? With with the, I gosh, let me go to the release view real quick. Ah yeah, the Lost System, so surrender. To allow players to be arrested without losing their life, they will be able to surrender by coming to a halt and powering down their ships when ordered by security. Security will halt their attack and arrest criminal players. Oh boy, how many times do you think that's going to glitch? Where you're going to, they're going to they're going to tell you to stop, and you're going to stop, and then they're going to spam you with missiles, <laughs> because security is very bad at following their own orders in this game. They'll scan you, and then they'll they'll be like don't move or you'll get in trouble and then they'll come and ram you and you'll move your ship and they'll be like you're not getting away from me and you'll get <laughs> you'll get a fine <laughs> so i don't even want to think about what they're going to do when we we stop flying in the middle of a battle and uh they <laughs> i don't know they do whatever they're going to do but that's cool yeah i mean the ability to surrender once it actually is working i'll give it maybe a couple hot patches but once it is working, that's going to be great for, for bounty hunting. Bounty hunting, to me... Now, I know they put bounty hunting V2 on the progress tracker, I believe. But to me, it feels like bounty hunting is being built piece by piece. I have to type it in twice. Uh, they, they keep putting in these little things here and there that keep adding to the bounty hunting profession. Like this right here, the NPC tracker service. Bounty hunting gameplay will use this service to expose the actions taken by outlaws so they can be tracked by bounty hunters. This, combined with the security system they're working on, combined with the surrender system they're working on, combined with things like EMPs, um, uh, what's the uh, interdictions, all of this stuff I feel like is building the bounty hunting profession piece by piece, rather than just, you know, mining tier zero. That's just how I see it. I, but like I said, I know they did have bounty hunting tier zero on the uh, roadmap so clearly they're planning on doing something big for it but all these features are super supportive of that one miscellaneous support what is this just like hey we need two bolts in this piece of metal sure is that what they do small tasks that don't necessitate a full entry hmm so i guess these maybe that's stuff like the um uh the the price alert stuff it didn't really have a deliverable, but it came into the game. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, so it could be that. It could be really anything, it seems. That's so ambiguous. They're just like, these are a bunch of small features, and they're basically getting worked on by everyone. <laughs> I dig it. Let's see. Fire Sprite Team. Now, this is an interesting one. I don't know if you guys saw this. This is new. Uh, I only saw this for the first time the other day. This is all the Theaters of War stuff. And this kind of fits in with a theory that, that, that my friend Execute has. You, you guys heard him on the last stream and we'll see him on the new video. 
this is take take this with a grain of salt this is a theory uh this is a realization that execute came to that i believe essay was trying to tell him over in the info runners for a while but he thinks that it's possible with the different changes that have been going on the new uh the new terms of service popping up in the launcher which is the first time we've gotten one in the game the new ads that are starting to ramp up on their targeting on youtube he believes that this is all pointing towards CIG moving to releasing a product of some sort because they're preparing themselves both legally and in the advertising. Uh, the, the advertising they said is them experimenting with advertising, with their targeting to figure out what they're going to do with it. So it's not that they're advertising now, it's that they're figuring out how they're going to advertise in the future. So he believes that they might be actually looking to release theaters of war as its own product launched either alongside or before squadron 42 on top of that there's also a floating theory that's starting to kind of spread around again this is one i heard on info runners from execute and essay who's been saying this for a while that theaters of war is going to be meant as both yes the volamander uh, standalone possibly free to play multiplayer but also a packaged multiplayer with squadron 42 so that when you buy squadron 42 the multiplayer version of it is a normal multiplayer mode you then play that normal multiplayer mode you get drawn into that mixed combat sort of idea and that brings you into star citizen this is what i believe we actually me and execute were talking about this during the last stream this is something that we specifically had talked about but that is just that's the theory that i had gotten from him and it's something I've noticed here as I look more into these features. Like if you look at the UI for the scoreboard here, not only is it doing the scoreboard and converting it to building blocks, this is building a new interface with real-time access to position, current, sorry, position, current, loadout, and vehicle statuses, squads, names, ranks, scores, objectives, kills, deaths, assists, ping, and voice chat status. You guys want to know what other game does that? This game does that. That's exactly what they're building in Theaters of War. There's no way they're going to build this all out just to make a testing version for the game, right? I think we're all we're all probably past that at this point, right? Theaters of War is going to be a full-on game, it seems, that they're building. We can have discussions about that being incredible feature creep or misappropriation of funds since building another game isn't necessarily building star citizen this is all these are all different conversations to have but i think this is what they're building for theaters of war and that i think that's a pretty big deal that's that's a lot of effort and then on top of that they've got other stuff going on here miscellaneous support is talking about all kinds of different uh game modes they're talking about kill cams and ui updates they're updating broken moon and dying star this is going to be a big project, it seems, just looking at the at the stuff on the, the progress tracker. They are really, and I think that's probably why they announced Fire Sprite. They announced the partnership because they realized on top of, you know, that might be another point that, that just came to my mind. They realized that they're getting to the point where this is getting big enough that if they start talking about this in the way that this is showing, and they don't tell us that there's another company working on it, then that would, I think that would really rub people wrong because this is clearly taking a lot of work. This would be pulling a lot of work off of the Star Citizen team. So that might be why they also announced their Fire Sprite partnership. That's another interesting point on the progress tracker that's fun to look at. You know, in fact, I'm gonna flip that so that I can remember to post that somewhere. Let's look at Planet Tech. They finished the planet. They they finished the planet creator. What was that last year, last fall, with Planet Tech V4? So what what, are they, what do you guys think they're doing with planets now? I'm gonna mute this because this bottle's loud. <laughs> Afrotastic. Oh my god. I if if we haven't gotten salvaged by the time we got Theaters of War, then I'm gonna freaking I'm gonna break everything. But yeah, I think Theaters of War, and you know what? They know it. This is. This is the inevitability of what they've built. They have built an incredible engine now, and 
they want to benefit from it. And Star Citizen is not the only way they're going to do it. They're a full freaking company now. They're probably going to start building off other games. Maybe Tau is the solution to paying for SC. It could be. And I think that's what they see. You know, they see the, the, the possibility of skins. Really, skin sales for Theaters of War are going to be insane. And I think they see that as a good monetization method. And honestly, if they can use that instead of selling ships, I'm down for it. As long as they can maintain Star Citizen and what it's supposed to be. But anyways, Planet Tech. <laughs> Lava Tech. Lava freaking Tech. This is interesting. It looks like this is probably going to come in a later update. A secondary update for... Let's see the deliverable view. So it's just engineering. A, a, a separate update for, uh, for the pyro system. But... I did say this was going to happen. Earlier this year, I made that video, Rivers Mean Lava. Squadron 42 is a priority. Yeah, I know, I know. It is it is for them, it's not for me. For me, everything is a means to an end for Star Citizen. I really, really, really am excited for Squadron 42, but Star Citizen is just more important to me. Most people don't seem to realize 90% of 95% of developer time is spent on Squadron 42. Only after it's released will they really start developing SC. Yeah, but they like the people those are the people who signed on for SC because they're being advertised SC. They don't they don't get told. I mean, and that's not I don't know whose fault that is. I really don't. But people see advertising for Star Citizen and they think, okay, well, this must be what they're doing, this must be what they're building, so they sign on for Star Citizen. And then they don't realize that. Star Citizen isn't the game that's being built with the, that money. So I think that's a big reason why people sometimes are like, what the heck? <laughs> because they don't even realize it's another game being built with your money. They should really communicate this better. <laughs> yeah. But if they did, they would get less money. If they told people, we're building another game with the money that you're putting into this game, they'd get less money. And they fell into that. They, they kind of fell into that. I think they were planning on having Star Citizen be funded by the funds, obviously, since they were funds. But they just they got too big and they realized they need to go about it this weird convoluted way where they use Star Citizen to build money for Squadron 42, to build money for Squad for Star Citizen. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So a lot of this stuff, though, that we're seeing for the planets, this is a lot of back-end stuff. We're talking ecosystem in here oh actually that might be front end i might have picked the one thing enhancing the realism of plants and animals yeah i picked the one thing that wasn't <laughs> back in actually no these are these are presets so these will be kind of front end too adjust external factors sorry wait the scattered object presets so these are the things that are on the ground you're you're you know gravel and stuff they're going to adjust to external factors such as weather proximity to rivers coasts and differing climates different climates I thought we already got that. Or I guess that's just maybe biomes and biomes are split by climate. So I'm not sure how that'll be different. But the fact that it'll be, they'll change the scatter based on the weather is pretty cool. Is not most of the money is going into the engine? I don't know. I mean, look at how much of this. If we go back to the tracker real quick and we look at how much of this stuff is going into the engine. I mean, here's the engine team, right? But there's also all these Squadron 42 teams. So there's clear there there is just Squadron 42 stuff going on here, or else wouldn't this I, I mean some of this stuff does roll over into Star Citizen. Like these the the station, the Idris, you know, the the locations, the Bangle, that kind of stuff does roll over. Which is good, but the stuff that goes into these chapters, designing the chapters and all that stuff, and that kind of stuff is unique to Squadron. You think they'll pour the profits of Squadron 42 towards SC once? I think, I think it'll just be like a normal game development studio, honestly. Once Squadron 42 is done, they'll just move more of the team over to the next game, which is Star Citizen, and they will use they and you know they won't move the money there they'll just move the people there and it's just like how cyberpunk was being built lightly while witcher 3 was being worked on and then once witcher 3 was finished a lot more people were moved over to cyberpunk while you know there's probably a small team that's left to work on something else or the next witcher or whatever it's it's kind of like 
it's always a rolling fluid motion of people between different teams based on what's the priority at the time yeah like Anno said there will be squadron 42 part two so there will be some people that are kind of sticking around working on other things i'm sure they might have another project in the works or at least in planning at this point i i would think they'd have something long term in planning at this point jump points are eh. jump points are i don't know is everybody excited for jump points i'm just excited for the system jump points is just uh you know the means to the end some people i know are excited for the experience of jumping though the the build up the the location or the location will be pretty cool i'm not gonna lie they did a good job with that. Boat movement parameters by the vehicle team will be finished by June, according to the progress tractor. What do we know about boats in the game so far? Literally nothing. <laughs> they, the boats came out of nowhere, and honestly, I'm like, what? Ugh. Boats are one of those few features that I look at CIG, and I'm just like, guys, what the f You know, like, boats are cool. I want boats, but like, now? I know they're building the engine and they have to build it in because it needs to be there for later, but boats? <laughs> that was always a really weird one for me. Maybe boat tech is only that spaceship also can swim. Yeah, it's our 890 jump in the water. Carrick looks like a boat to you. Give you a Carrick that can land in the water and you'll lose your mind. It would be pretty cool to land your ship in the water. Do you think the jump points will be interesting? because there are a lot of gameplay and player interaction possibilities like pirating and stuff like that. Yeah, it is a central location. That will be cool. Let me expand everything for a second here. Let's see, persistent streaming. This is really important. Persistent streaming and server meshing. This is currently scheduled to not be done until March of next year. So keep that in mind. This is what defines if we get pyro or not, and it's currently scheduled to not be done till March of next year. So keep an eye on that one. Boats are under the vehicle tech team. Ah, oh, okay, I missed that. I thought it was under the features. In your hangar, there's a reward for original and veteran backers that includes Squadron 42 Mission Disc. I've been wondering what this was referring to, but it's probably referring to DLC. Mission Disc, yeah, I don't know what that would be. That might just be some something some in-game object illegal goods dealer this is an interesting one it's a roaming vendor i believe located mostly wandering around shadow shadowy and secretive areas i wonder if this guy is just gonna like pop up in different locations that would be so cool i really really hope that this is coming in 314 it's supposed to be done in june but that's just on the design side we don't know what else needs to be done Usually, usually the design is done before the art, so I'm guessing this is still a ways away, but it would be really cool if we got it. Have I seen Stanton delivery? I have not. No. I thought they wanted to finish server meshing by the end of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're still aiming for that, and this is... Wait, let me go back to that, because this is, uh, where was that? Here? Yeah, this is um this was updated last January of this year. So there's a possibility that this is out of date, but we won't really know for a while, unfortunately. Jake, my man, I knew you'd show up. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got the mastermind behind this. I was doing a, a sales pitch for this thing earlier. Jake, this is an inc incredible system, dude. The fact that you can cross-reference stuff between this and the monthly report um i think is really cool but also the fact that you can click into the deliverable view and see the other teams working on this stuff is great we were we were looking at some things <laughs> say roadmap into the mirror three times <laughs> don't i have to turn around in a circle yeah we were just going over some of the new features that are coming to the game and asking questions and talking about things and getting some some input can't wait for the actor feature team to finish their work on mop and bucket. Yeah, I wonder if we'll be able to use the mop and bucket. I really, I you know, I'd really love to be able to go into theaters of war armed with the suds and the buppet. Buppet? The buppet. It's no longer a bucket. It's called a buppet, but it's just animation, so. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just AI janitors. Oh, I want the mop. I want the mop. Give me the mop, CIG. Jake, can you make it happen? Oh, he said not right away. <laughs> Code Senpai, thanks for following the channel. Also, been talking to you and seeing you around the Discord, dude. Thanks for hanging out. He said not right away, guys. Player interaction experience T0, T1, and T2. Why are they splitting to three? Curious. Curiosity. So, player experience is a holistic array of complementary features and systems, all related directly to the player. Player status, item status, environment status, as well as interactions with both the game world and the objects within are covered under these systems. Okay. And then the next part, <clears throat> try to answer questions wherever they pop up. Cool. I appreciate that, dude. I really do. I love that. I've never, ever, ever seen that from a game company. So thank you. Although I'm starting to see it now. Uh, let's see. Lockers T1 introduces a consistent way to store clothes, armor, and items in a physicalized state. Also includes a more... Okay, so lockers and inventory are the, the tier one, the second version of the player interaction experience. So the player interaction experience is built as a way to interact with those lockers. And then after that, you guys will be moving on to the visor, HUD, and helmet. Hmm. But this is, uh, this seems a little out of date. Jake, is this? It's what you wanted when you were a backer. That's what I'm talking about, man. The best jobs are given to the people who do them because they see the need for them, right? So, Jake, we're getting we're getting uh, these. It says that this HUD and helmet update is going to change the boot up and power down sequences and transitions between FPS and ship HUDs. So, does that mean that this update here, where is it? Where are you? I feel like I'm... There it is. Does that mean that this one won't have the transitions? This is just going to be the new HUD. It just kind of pops up, but doesn't do all of the fancy transition stuff. This is the tech till the ship side, but the transitions wouldn't come in until later. I'm assuming. Hmm, okay, 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 okay. Actor tech. What are you guys working on? Weapon handling. T2. Character animations with interaction, interacting and customizing FPS weapons. Okay, that's cool. Making the FPS weapon gameplay a little bit better. You don't mind if it doesn't transition? Yeah, transitions, I mean, the animation's not the important part, right? It's the actual HUD. I don't mind that the, the animations come in later. And audio. I think I'm going to hit audio here just for a little bit. And then let's go ahead and hop into game. So anybody who is part of the org, not a guest, but full member of the organization, GII, you're welcome to join. Uh, but we will only be having eight people. Just to, you know, so it's not insane. So. Your favorite team is the EUPU team? <laughs> EUPU. All right, we'll go to that one after audio, and then we'll move, and then we'll move. Okay. Uh, Cure Life Medical Tool. That's pretty cool. We got the ships. Docking, docking, dynamic events. Huh. Oh, right. This is just audio. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder what that means. Audio is just made like... Uh, if sounds that can keep being used for new dynamic events. Hacking T0. Excited for that. I wonder what, what, what audio did for that. Shield capacitor audio should be interesting too. All right, where's our EUPU? Ch -ch -ch. 
Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's a long distance probing is a very interesting one. It is very easy to miss something sometimes, too. That's why I come on here like every oops, every couple weeks I'll come on here because I've I've seen stuff here that I've never thought was here before. I'm like, is this new? No. OK, I guess I just missed it again. Environmental gameplay, new activities that are focused on gameplay in the environment. Huh. Expanding interactions with objects placed around locations and new dangers in the environment, both natural and human made. Hmm. What the heck does that mean? Hmm, it's a while away. This sounds like platforming. Is this is this platforming work <laughs> to like build up the uh, interest of navigating places? I know most of Pedro's stuff is meant to be squ Squadron 42, but I really wish they'd add more of his music. No, Pedro is is Star Citizen. Uh, it's uh, uh, what's his name? G Geoff. Uh, I have some of his music here. Hmm. Anybody got his name? I think Geoff Zanelli. Geoff Zanelli is doing uh, Squadron 42. Yeah. And then Pedro Camacho is doing Star Citizen. There's a lot of star, uh, almost, uh, I would say most of the music in star, star Citizen is Pedro's. But he's definitely, you know, he's got a lot more stuff that, that needs to come in as... I think Pedro is also kind of like the planet team, where he could be doing a lot of stuff, but because other stuff hasn't caught up yet, he's not. But yeah, he also does the ship commercials. We talked about, I talked to him about the, uh, he really liked the 300 series commercial. Had the inspiring Star Citizen track, and it's my favorite piece of his. It's not in the PU. Yeah, there are some that aren't in there. Definitely. environmental okay we move past that long distance probing this one is this oh my god guys this i don't know how fun this is going to be in game but long distance probing besides sounding rather dirty is just like ooh, that was that was something that i used to do in, in mass effect that i wanted to be better i wanted scanning and probing planets and stuff in mass effect to be better and i feel like this is what it's gonna be i'm so excited for it oh it just came back on here okay i got you yeah jake is here jake drops by every once in a while loot generation tier one i know a lot of people are gonna love that being able to get more rewards for the stuff you do is gonna be great but it looks like it won't be coming in the next i'm guessing q15 or uh 315 in october and then loot generation tier one, I guess 316. If if we're lucky, you know, you never know. These are this could be there could be more work. It could get delayed. This stuff, as always, is tentative. Long distance probing is how you get loots from your SO in another city. It's how you get loots from the Van Duel, dude. All of my relationships with the Van Duel are strictly long distance. Mining components. Well, we got that way long ago. We're working on gadgets now. They're done with upstream. Still need the downstream to touch it. Audio effects. Okay. So, yeah. It looks like it. The engineering and design's all done on the gadgets. They just need to do that extra stuff. But they aren't coming in 314, are they? Anything that improves mining from the mouse wheel minigame it is. <laughs> True. It's nice that this will bring some extra sort of gameplay that doesn't just require a on-screen number or bar I think you said this before the exact statement yeah MGL that's the that's the bummer of being somebody who's normally here you get to hear the stuff I say multiple times <laughs> the gadgets wasn't it something you had to EVA to place yeah MGL yeah that's and that's pretty good that's cool I like that resource management is another one from the EUPU the system will handle resources for stations, settlement cities and all other locations so this is kind of built into the Quasar, they call it, no, Odin system, or Quantum, whatever you, I don't know. 
Odin is the tool, Quantum is the back end, I don't know what to call it, but this looks like it's built around that whole economy thing, making sure everything is properly equipped, and then ship to ship refueling, which is going to be another interesting one. One that makes Seer the Sixth rather antsy. Um, so we'll see what they do with ship to ship refueling. I know he's going to he's gonna really nitpick it. Is the mining spider supposed to be a ship or a ground vehicle? I believe it's a ship. It can fly. It, it's supposed to be in space. The gadgets would make multi-crew way more interesting. You're right. Yeah, MGL. It would be so nice to have, like, people with actual roles now. I think it's a ground vehicle? Hmm. I thought it was a ship. I thought we saw it flying. Like, they, they fly around in space and then land on the asteroids. Either way. Either way, either way, either way. Let's go ahead and hop into Star Citizen, guys. I think it's time we play. I'm gonna hop into the game with the org. Le organization. We're gonna hop into some live gameplay here. And we're gonna keep the peace in a system. What system, you may ask? Well, I don't know. We haven't picked our star system yet. We have so many choices. Will it be Stanton? It will be Stanton, if you were wondering. Yeah, so we're gonna go into Stanton and we're gonna kill some criminals and catch some bounties and snub some picos no we're not going to bother the picos we love pico but if anybody in the org would like to join i'm going to go ahead and hop into the channel here